Hello everyone and welcome to the game engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In today's video we are going to add a new dialog window for selecting a folder where the imported asset files are going to be saved. We'll also do a few bug fixes and improvements. At the end of the last video, we added a section to Geometry Import Settings for changing the Destination folder. When we press this button, we want a window to open where we can select a different folder for asset files to be saved in. This window is similar to the Save File dialog we have here. Let me first add the dialog window, which I'll call Select Folder dialog. I'll set its foreground color, and then I'm not sure what to use for Windows Startup Location. Let's see what the Configuration window uses, for example. Hmm, well, it's set to Center Screen, so let's use this one. Use Layout Rounding will lay out controls such that they snap to integer pixel locations, which makes it less blurry, but can result in aliasing in some cases. I'll set a minimum size for the window and use primal dialog style. The window is split in two rows, one for the content browser and one for buttons for selecting folder or cancelling the operation. I forgot to fix the namespaces, so let's do that now. Ok, like I said, there is a content browser where we are not allowed to drop files for importing and we are also not allowed to select more than one item. File access right makes sure that we can't open assets from within this window. Here we get an error with something about generate path stack which is preventing Visual Studio from rendering the window. Not sure why this is. Let's see if it keeps doing this if I continue. So the second part of the window is dedicated to a border which contains two buttons for selecting a folder or closing the window without selecting a folder. Let me see if the issue goes away if I don't use the content browser, which it does, so it's probably a real issue that we need to fix. I'll add the two buttons first and then we can try and find out what's causing the problem. Since the error is hinting at generate path stack buttons method, and the only thing we did with respect to these buttons in the previous episode was adding an extra call in the loaded event handler, I have a strong suspicion that that might be the cause of the issue. Let me see if it works when I comment out this call. And there it is. Obviously that call wasn't for nothing, but we are going to tweak the content browser soon because of another issue, and as a result we won't have to make that call anymore, as we'll see in a minute. While we are here, I'll add a condition where we open the configurator window. We only do so if the configurator contains any proxies, or we want to force the window open without dropping files, in which case I can add an optional parameter that can be set to true. Now going back to select folder dialog, we need to implement this method that handles the click event. Here 
Here I add a read-only property that contains the selected folder path, which we can get from the selected folder of the content browser. As you can see here, the content browser is a disposable class, which means that we need to dispose it whenever we are done using it. We can call content browser's dispose method when this window is closing. We don't need to get the data context in this case, since we already have a public method in content browser view which does the same thing. In addition, we need a start location for this dialog window. We can pass the path to current destination folder and when the content browser view is done loading, we can set the selected path of its view model. Now we can open a selected folder dialog window when we press the change button in the settings configurator. Here we get the destination folder of the selected proxy, remove its trailing directory separator and pass it to a new instance of select folder dialog. The dialog window is shown by calling show dialog, which will block all other interactions until it returns either true or false. If the dialog result is true, it means that the user selected a folder and we can get it from the selected folder property of the dialog and use it as the new destination folder. Now we can see the window when we click the change button. However, there seems to be a delay before the folder contents are shown. And the reason is that we are getting 69 binding errors, which all print a message to the output panel in Visual Studio, and that's what's causing the delay. If you would run the editor in release build outside of Visual Studio, we would probably not notice the delay. However, it's not a good practice to leave binding errors, even if the application appears to be working fine. As it happens, this is not the first time I've made a content browser like this and therefore have encountered this issue before. The good news is that it can be fixed as we'll see after I'm done testing the folder selection functionality. Here I selected another folder for these FBX files to be saved. And that seems to be working as intended. Now the fix for our binding error is that we simply don't set the selected folder property of the content browser until after the UI has been completely loaded. Here we see that the selected folder is being set right in the content browser's constructor. I'm going to remove this line. We are also not going to call this method again, because setting the selected folder afterwards will result in this method getting called. We already set the selected folder property here in this event handler, which is called after content browser view was loaded. The only problem now is that our content browser in the main window doesn't know what folder to show. We can add a few event handlers to take care of this issue. Although I admit this is a temporary solution and I'm probably going to do it in some other way in a later episode when we have a docking manager where we can have more than one instance of the content browser open. For now I made the design time size of the world editor control bigger so we can see it better. And then I added two event handlers for loaded and is visible changed events.
Both events will set the selected folder property of the content browser to the content folder path of the current project. Oh wait, we can't trim selected folder if it's null, which can happen, so we only trim if it's not null. Well, I guess it's time to restart Visual Studio again. Ok, now we see the content folder being loaded correctly and when I try to change the destination folder, we are not getting any binding errors. Excellent! Doing a quick test for another place where we use the content browser, which is the save file dialog, reveals that we broke something here as well. Well, obviously, since we are not setting the selected folder in Content Browser's constructor anymore, we have to set it whenever a Content Browser viewer is loaded. This is pretty much the same as in Select Folder dialog. Don't worry about the red squiggly lines here, it's just Visual Studio's vain attempt to annoy me. Actually, let's just use the root of Content Folder for this, since we are not providing a start location for this dialog. However, feel free to add it if you'd like to have that functionality. Another issue that is somewhat unrelated to what we have been doing today is that when we open any assets, like this texture, and then change to another game project, now we have a window open showing an asset from the previous project, which is obviously not good. So we need to close all windows when we want to switch to a different game project. We can try adding a new method to the world editor that gets called when we try to load another game project. If there was already a game project open, then we call unload. Next, we close all application windows except the main window. Finally, we set main windows data context to null and close it. We can call this new method whenever we create a new project or open an existing one. Now we can see that all windows are closed every time we switch projects. That's all for today's video. Next time we are going to add a control that will display the status of items that are being imported. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!